Hello. Hello. Hi, is this the Kingdom Hall? It is. Oh, I just had a quick question. I was wondering if someone could help me with. Yes. Um, well, some Jehovah Witnesses tell me about JW.org. Yes. That's a good place to research and stuff. And um, it is. I just came across this one part on the website and. I wanted to see if this is still a rule they have that's in force. Do you, could I just read it to you? Yes. Um, it says, it's a questions from readers, and it says um, this part. Well, I have two parts I was asking about if they still enforce this rule. It says, how then must we answer the question? Would it be a violation of the scriptures for a Christian to permit a veterinarian to give blood transfusions to a pet? By all means, to do so would be a violation of scripture. To use blood for transfusion, even in the case of an animal, would be improper. Um, and then this other part, I'm going to read you a little bit more up further down. It says, what then of animal food? May it be used if there is reason to believe there is blood in it? As far as a Christian is concerned, the answer is no, on the basis of principles already mentioned. Um, and then it says, you also just can't go by what's on the package. Um, if, if you're still worried about it, you should like um, talk to the company and find out if it has blood in it. Is that still a thing? Well, I mean, uh, as with any type of uh, food, I mean, a person is going to take reasonable precautions, but, you know, if it's, it, well, it depends on what we're talking We're talking about two different things here, blood transfusion and blood and food. Oh, right, in your pet's food. It says if your conscience still bothers so you about it, you should write to the company and make sure that it doesn't have blood in it. Right. Um, so, but what about transfusions for your pets? Is that still a thing? Well, I would have to do more research on oh, that. Oh, okay. But, okay. Uh, but, but, you know, stuff like that comes down to, uh, you know, having God's view on things and and having his are appreciating how he feels about blood. Mm. What about all those animals? What if you you have a wild dog and they're just eating other animals? They're carnivorous. Well, that's that's different. That's oh, it that's is. Kind of, but if you give well, him like some bloody kind of meat, circle. You know, that's kind of the cycle of life. Oh, oh, I see. You know, animals eating animals. I mean, that's. You know, that's that's the way they're made. But why, if it's just a little fraction of blood in their food, it would be very, it would probably be a minor fraction, wouldn't it? Well, and that's up to a person themselves. No, the article says it's it's against God. It doesn't say you can decide. But anyway, well, you know, when it depends I... If we're talk, it depends if we're talking of fractions, if we're talking just blood issues. Yeah, well, you know that... For, for decades before the fractions thing was changed in the year 2000, they, they did not allow any parts of blood. Right. You know that, right? And, you know. It's okay. Yeah. I, I just. And so when th that was written, there was no parts of blood allowed. But you know what I think of when I read that? You know how Jesus in Matthew 23 said, you blind guides, you strain out a gnat, but swallow a camel. Have you ever heard that expression? Oh, yeah. Doesn't that sound kind of like straining out a gnat to you? Well, everybody's conscience is different. And. And I mean, I asked you what you thought. We 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 want to we want to do things that's approved by God. Do you know if they still and, have that and, rule? And, and that some things some things uh, people can minimize most anything. Yeah, so or they just, can. Jesus is not warning about minimizing; he's warning about maximizing rules. So you're just turning it on its head. 
But um, do you know if they still have that rule? Do you know if witnesses talk about that, uh, writing to the animal food companies or um, or I've not? Never heard of it. Oh, you never heard of it. Oh, I wonder if they changed it. Were they wrong about this? No. I am. I would say that's uh, that's from a pretty old magazine. Hmm. So they were teaching people that, but it's God doesn't really care about like giving your pet a blood transfusion or or blood in his food. Are you? Is that what you're saying? He doesn't. He only cared about it in that at that time. No. Hmm. Oh. I'm saying I haven't I haven't read up on that. In oh, okay. Um, it's in. Let's and, see. And it, you know, when when we're looking at things, what's our reason for looking at them? You know, are we looking for reasons to be negative, or are we looking for things to make our service to God more approved? Well, you know, it does say in the Bible to test the inspired expressions to make sure they come from God. So I'm just kind of looking at the history of the organization. So either what comes from God is what they say now or what it said what they said then. It couldn't be both because it's contradictory. Well, there's there's been there's changes regular in our organization. Yeah. Were they ever wrong about anything? Sure. Oh, okay. But they say at the same time. Um, on the broadcast that the direction comes from Jehovah to Jesus to the slave to the people. So how do you reconcile that? Well, the scriptures say that the light keeps getting brighter and brighter. You think that's talking about teaching wrong things in the name of Jehovah? You know, Russell said that new light cannot contradict old light, just add to it. And they've had so many things that have just completely changed, 180 degrees. Not, You know, new light is like when the light is coming up from the sun. You see something, you don't really, you, you could be like, I see something, it's really shadowy. And then you could be like, oh, I can tell now it's an animal, then it's um, a dog, and then maybe what breed of dog as the light gets brighter. Brighter light doesn't turn a dog into an elephant, does it? So that, that verse is not applicable to many of their total 180-degree changes, flip-flops, we call them, you know? No, I would, uh, I would agree with that. But, yeah. Um, but, um, if, if you'd like to learn more, we can get together with you. Would you like to learn more? Well, what is the purpose of your call, ma'am? Well, um, I just wanted to ask about um, pet transfusions and blood and dog food. Because blood and dog food uh, isn't much of an issue. Oh, this says it is. Mm -hmm. It says you, if you discover that blood components are listed on the container of dog food or some other animal food, a Christian could not conscientiously feed that product to any animal over which he has jurisdiction. Again, think about what Jesus said in Matthew 23. You blind guides, you strain okay, out so a gnat. If, if that bothers you, then don't use the dog food. Does it bother you that they would be so legalistic and, and ridiculous? If I knew dog food had blood in it, I would not use it. This so says you're responsible. This teaches you're responsible to find out. I don't plant food that I know has blood in yeah, it. Yeah. Oh, plant. Oh, I see. Because why is it like. Why? What? Why does a plant care God, if it gets God says blood? It's not to be using blood at all. Blood is not to be used. It's supposed to be poured out hmm. when an. Un- where do you think blood? A- where do you think the approved blood fractions come from? Do you think all that blood that was donated so that you Jehovah's Witnesses can have blood fractions? You think it's not stored on a shelf? Uh, again, what is the purpose of this call, ma'am? Well, that's a nice thing to say when you don't want to think about what I just said. As you're just I'm using a thought. That's a thought-stopping you're, you're, technique. You're wanting, to, you're, wanting to, you're wanting to try to start a fight and an argument. <gasps> oh. And, and I'm, I'm just curious. I mean, that's what it sounds like. Well, when witnesses tell me to go to the website, and I do, and this is what I'm finding... I think it's a legitimate question. You're a qualified minister, right? What 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 say you? What do yes, you say? I am. Mm-hmm. Well, 
It's just interesting. But, but, but the manner of your questioning isn't in an inquiring manner that you want to know. Really? It's that you're trying to find things to tear people down mm. and start a fight. Well, when you guys teach doctrine in a lot of your literature, it does ask those kind of questions, too. Because they're trying to lead a person down a certain path and away from what they have learned from the yeah, consensus of traditional Christianity. Huh? Nothing's ever given without right. a barrage of scriptures. And, I, and I gave you a scripture, Matthew twenty three twenty four. And as far as blood, I can give you the example of Jesus who put life before law, even the life of an animal that fell into a pit on the Sabbath. He desires mercy, not sacrifice, as in all the people that have died from that horrible teaching. So there's a scripture to think about. Anyways, well, I don't want to keep you. Th- thanks for thanks but for that, talking. But that, I mean, that doesn't have anything to do with superseding God's direction on what to do with blood. Yeah. As I said, why why do you guys use so much blood that is stored then? Some blood fractions that you all okay. accept. Some where do you think fractions come from? I don't. The ones they allow. Since the it's year 2000. The makes a personal decision. No, people were and still are disfellowshipped for taking the wrong fractions of blood. And no. they were disfellowshipped for blood transfusions ever since 1961. And then because of some country didn't really like that, they said, well, we won't disfellowship, but what they announced is you have disassociated yourself if you took blood. So you can research into that. That's totally true. It's documented in the book called Crisis of Conscience by Raymond Franz. Have you ever read it? Have you heard of it? No, he was on the governing body. And he became an apostate. We don't we don't call names like that. But he felt that once he saw well, how the how the governing body meetings operate, he uh, was shocked. He thought it would be these spiritual men praying and reading the Bible. And he said it's run just like a corporate meeting, like a corporate board meeting. They vote on new light, on doctrines. So, anyways, would you like a copy? I'll send you one. No, I would not. Aren't you allowed to read it? I can read and do anything I want, ma'am, but I choose to be obedient to God. God doesn't let you read Crisis of Conscience? Why not? It's not pornographic. He doesn't want want me associating with apostates. Oh, I see. Hmm. You know, Scientology does that, too. They call the people, um, oh, I forgot, they have a special term for it, too people that leave. You know, if you watch Leah Remini's series on Scientology, you'll see so many similarities. They're not allowed to talk to people that leave either. An apostate is not someone who leaves. Yes, it is. It's someone who leaves and then chooses to beat up their former brothers. No, they call apostates just ones who leave. A lot of people are even shunned that were never even baptized. It's so horrible. I know a man who hasn't ever even seen... I know a man who never even seen his grandchildren ever. And he only left for conscience reasons because the way they were obstructing investigation into pedophiles. That's why he left. What you were you left for a few years? Yes, I was never considered an apostate. Were you shunned? Yes. Mm, I see. Okay. You think that's in the Bible? You think First Corinthians five is talking about people that don't even attend the fellowship anymore, or people that claim to be called a brother? I'm not sure what you're talking about. Well, First Corinthians five is a big um, passage they use for justification of shunning, but it doesn't teach shunning. And it certainly doesn't have anything to do with people who don't even claim to be of that faith anymore. Ma'am, if, if, if you're in total disagreement and you don't want to know the actual truth of the Bible, why are you calling? Well, um, just to, I wanted to ask about... Um, is, this, is this part of your ministry to try to tear down the organization and its members? To Well, I wouldn't put it that way, but as far as refuting the governing body and the teaching that you have to come to Jehovah's Witnesses for salvation, come to the organization for salvation, yes, that is part. Because 
as so long you as you either had members that you either you either had family that were witnesses. I or didn't. You yourself were one at one time. I wasn't. You know, um, as long as you keep adhering to that, you, you'll never know the joy of the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll never know who He really is. You'll never know what He did for you because they totally minimize that. They remove you from being born again, being adopted as a child of God, from being in the new covenant. Well, I can tell you that you're not. From knowing that your sins are forgiven. They don't even tell you what grace really means in the Bible. And I they actually reword that. it. You, you're what? I'm fully aware of all of that. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, the, the great the crowd people am, only get benefits by adhering to a late... Uh, 19th century sect from Brooklyn, New York. Like, is that really in the Bible? Or does Jesus call himself the truth? Seriously, I'll send you Crisis of Conscience for free. No, ma'am, I have no desire for it. It's so freeing. I have all the the fire-starting materials I need. (laughs) Well, that's a good one right there. Um, well, anyways, thanks so much for talking well, to me. Well, that's what anyway. the Christians in the Bible did with their evil books. They piled yeah, them up and burned them. Yeah, that's the, they just control all your input, all your thoughts. They're so afraid of conflicting information. You know, truth that is really true. It has nothing to be afraid of. You know, my well, church has never said, don't read ones. this or that. They want us to we're know. We're to search for deserving ones. Oh, deserving Those ones. Those are disposed for everlasting life. Did you know that Romans says that no one is deserving and no one seeks after God? So where are you going to find these deserving ones? Because the Bible says no humans are deserving. And it is only God who seeks after us. But I guess you're, just, you're seeking deserving ones. That just means people who listen to everything the Watchtower says or are at a hard place. And so they're hey, more receptive. Okay, Bye. God bless you.